There are pretenders among us. Geniuses with the ability to become anyone they want to be. In 1963, a corporation known as the Center isolated a young pretender named Jared and exploited his genius for their research. Then one day, the pretender ran away. Greetings, my dear viewers. It is I, Drehon, and welcome back to Dungeons & Dragons Character Conversion. Today we are looking at another one of my absolute favorite characters, and one of my absolute favorite series from when I was growing up. Since this is my birth month, I thought I would tackle The Pretender. Jared. This TV series is excellent, and Jared himself is actually a pretty interesting character and concept. You see, when we're kids, we want to be doctors, firefighters, police officers, astronauts. Jared is able to do just that. Everything. Any job he wants, he can become that person. He can become a doctor. He can become a police officer, an astronaut. He was even a rodeo clown for a fraction of a time. He can do anything. Expertly, which is just... Amazing. So, I thought, well, how about we create that in Dungeons and Dragons? So how can you play as Jared? Now the thing that is a little bit confusing here, and a little... What's the word I'm looking for? Uh, shoot, I forgot the word, but anyway. Uh, things start to get a little wonky with Jared as far as ability scores go. And that's because while he has a good mind, he's distracted a little too easily. That's because, like in the intro, the center took Jared when he was just a boy. So he never had a childhood. It's the one thing he could never be. Himself. A child. So, after he escaped, just about anything would get his attention. From strange toys that were popular back in the day, or certain food items, even candy. His favorite, of course, being Pez. You see that in just about every single episode. Even some religious practices he becomes interested in. And sometimes this kind of distracts him a little bit, but not often. Most of the time he'll actually use that thing in some of his plans. Like one time he had a fascination with fruitcake. That was the Christmas episode. And he actually used that fruitcake to trap the evildoer of the day, which is hilarious, and I'm not going to spoil too much of this series, because I would love for you to be able to experience this as I did. And I think there might be a book series? Uh, anyway, The Pretender, aka Jared, is still an excellent character, so let's go ahead and get straight in the thick of things. Starting things off with the point by system for our stats, we're going to have a 10 for our strength and our constitution. Dexterity will be a 13, charisma will be a 12, and intelligence and wisdom will be a 14, our highest stats. Jared is, of course, human. We're going to go with the variant human. This will give us a plus one to our dexterity and a plus one to our charisma. We're going to grab the skill performance because whenever he takes on a new role, he executes it perfectly. He's a doctor. He 
becomes a doctor. Rodeo clown? He's a rodeo clown. I mean, in the... When one of those episodes, when he was going for a doctor role, he actually saved someone when he was just a civilian in the hospital. And he did a better job than the doctors, which was hilarious. Now, for your feet, we're going to go with actor. You get advantage on your charisma deception checks and your charisma performance checks. So you're able to play the part of the doctor better than the doctors. <laughs> Moving on to background. We're going to go with charlatan, mostly for the fact that Jared takes on a new role to technically help others, though he is still technically not those people. He's not a doctor. He's not an astronaut. He's not a scientist for disease control. He even says this at the end of certain episodes when he's talking to the villain of the day. All right, I admit it, I admit it, I killed him! The, the, the research was very valuable. Please, give me the vaccine. All right, Walter. But I will warn you, it's only sugar water. Sugar water? I don't know how to make a vaccine. You see, I'm not really a virologist. The truth is, this place gives me the creeps. What? You can check out any time you like, but you can never leave. Which is hilarious. But it just proves that Charlatan is one of the best options. I would have gone with the faceless background, but Charlatan just seemed like the better pick because of these features. You get proficiencies in deception and sleight of hand skills, and you also get proficiency in the disguise kit and the forgery kit, which has come in handy for Jared in a lot of situations. Of course, the scam that I picked was I put on new identities like clothes, which he does. We don't actually have his real last name for a majority of the series. He just gives out a random last name sometimes based off of his surroundings. He still uses his name, Jared, but he takes on a different last name just to make sure he's a little bit different. Of course, that feature, false identity, works perfectly. Because, of course, he has a lot of different IDs. Literally, it's on one of the episodes... He has multiple forms of identification that he uses to help him become that identity. He's an official, official, unofficially an official, which is hilarious. Moving on to our first class, we're going to go with the rogue We'll get our D8 hit die, we'll have our proficiencies in light armor, simple weapons, hand crossbows, long swords, rapiers, short swords, thieves tool proficiency, saving throws of dexterity and intelligence, and of course our skills. We're going with perception, persuasion, investigation, and intimidation. And oh boy, is he good at that intimidation. The one thing that he uses in order to catch the bad guy is to intimidate them into confessing. To put them in the same situation as they put their victims in and have them confess and record it. Please! You took the innocent honey's man and you turned him into your guinea pig. Someone to test your heart drug on. Someone that you didn't think would be missed if it didn't work. Well, it didn't work, did it? And someone did miss him. Enrique. So you buried him alive to save your research. Didn't you? Didn't you? Didn't you? Didn't you? Yes. Which 
won't fly in today's world with today's laws because coerced confessions just get thrown out. But they are still perfect for this series. For your expertise, investigation, and performance work best. By the way, did you know that thieves' tools can be used to set traps? That's actually Jared's expertise. He sets up traps. He makes traps. It just works. For level 2 rogue, we're getting the cunning action. Level 3 rogue, we're going to go with the roguish archetype inquisitive. This gives us earful deceit, eye for detail, and insightful fighting. And we also get steady aim just for being a third level rogue. For fourth level rogue, we get an increase to our constitution, which is going to be important because he has been put in situations where that would be necessary. And he does, in fact, get that improvement from those situations. Like, uh... One of the tests he was put through... Uh, not to his caregivers. Knowledge, of course. But one of the tests he was put through... Uh, was stopping his heart. And then restarting it. Yeah... It got dark at times in this series. Now for our multi-class. We're going to go with Artificer. Now we're only really needing a few features from the Artificer class. And that would be the right tool for the job. The Flash of Genius. And Tool Expertise. That's all we need. That's all that are necessary for Jared. We don't need all this other stuff. It's honestly a bit counterintuitive at times, but we're going to go ahead and go for Artificer anyway, just because it will sort of help. And some things in the Artificer we can still use, like with the magical tinkering and the spell casting. Magical Tinkering lets us create small little objects, one of them being a sort of recording device, which he uses often, especially to taunt the center, the organization that had originally kidnapped him and he escaped from. Yeah, he gets chased by them throughout this whole thing, and it causes a lot of problems. But the spell casting uses your intelligence modifier. You also get some more proficiencies in medium armor, shields, firearms, and tinker's tools. Level 2 artifices get item infusion, which I can see being helpful. I didn't pick out very specific ones because, well, it doesn't matter. Level 5 rogues get uncanny dodge. And level 3 artificers get an artificer specialist. I was originally going to go for the alchemist, but I found that Maverick would actually work a little bit better and keep to the theme of Jared a little bit more. We'll get the arcane breakthrough, which will add the ranger spell list to our own. And the first level spell that we're going to grab from our breakthrough spell list is going to be Ensnaring Strike, which comes from the Ranger spell list. We also get Cantrip Specialist and the right tool for the job, one of the things that's important for this build. Because with the fact that you can be whoever you want to be, you also need to have the tools to pass yourself off as that profession. Level 6 rogues get expertise. Go ahead and increase your persuasion and perception up to expertise. Level 4 artifices get an ability score improvement. However, I want to instead go with the feat observant. This will increase our wisdom by one point and also give us a plus 5 to our perception and our insight checks. Which... When you're trying to figure out who the bad guy is 
and why certain situations have gone wrong, you kind of need this. Level 7 rogues get evasion, which has been used a couple of times in the Pretenders series. Not often, but it has come up. Level 8 rogues get an ability score improvement. However, we're going with a feat. We're going to go with Tavern Brawler. This will increase our constitution by one point. Once again, referencing the fact that he has gone through situations where a higher constitution is, in fact, necessary. Weapon proficiencies and improvised weapons. He has demonstrated that a couple of times. And also an increase to your unarmed strike damage. It is now a 1d4 plus your strength modifier. Uh, he doesn't use firearms that often. He's mostly a hand-to-hand -hand combatant. Uh, when he does, in fact, get into combat. Most of the time, he's just made sure he's not in combat. At level 5, our Artificer gets another Arcane Breakthrough list, which will be Wizard, even though it's not going to be necessary because we're still picking a second level spell from the Ranger spell list, Pass Without Trace. Jared Sneaky, he knows how to get in and get out without being detected. So, Pass Without Trace definitely makes sense. You also get Contrip Sovent, again, not very important. Level 9 rogues get Steady Eye from the Inquisitive subclass, which is pretty useful, especially when you're an investigator like Jared. Level 6 artifices get Tool Expertise. You now add double your proficiency to any tool check that you make. Any tool check, which is perfect. Level 7 artifices get Flash of Genius which allows you to give a bonus to another creature's ability checks based on your intelligence modifier. This is sort of when he uh, gives people an epiphany, has them connect the dots. Oh no, my boss is actually evil. Oh no, this is actually happening Oh no, how could this person have done this? Oh no, I just remembered. Why? Moving on to 8th level artifice, so let's go ahead and get that ability score improvement, increasing our constitution and our wisdom each by one point. Level 10 rogues gets an ability score improvement, but we are actually going to go with a feat. Linguist. This will increase our intelligence by one point and give us three new languages of choice. Jared actually does speak multiple languages. He spoke in Spanish once, and I think Native American in another? I don't remember. And level 12 rogues get the keen mind feature. Oh, I forgot reliable talent at 11th level. My apologies. 11th level, you get your reliable talent. Level 12 rogues give you another ability score improvement. We're going to go with the feat Keen Mind, which will increase our intelligence to 16. Now, while this is the end of the build, it's not the end of the video, because we did have to choose Artificer in order to get some of those key features. So, we need to look at some spells. Here are the spells that I think would be stellar for Jared to have, because, well, artificers use their tools to replicate these magical effects. So for your cantrips, message and spare the dying work just fine. Because he has had to save lives a couple of times, and also, well, he has to use a walkie-talkie, or he talks to the center, he talks to his old caretaker at the center. Or he'll talk to another member of the center as a way of taunting them or as a way of helping them. Which he has done with Miss Parker. That might be a build for another day. First level Artificer will have... The first level spells of the Artificer will be Alarm, 
Featherfall, Grease, and Snare. Obviously, he's running from the center, so he's going to need things like Grease or Alarm to make sure that they don't catch him. Snare to entrap either members of the center that are after him, or to trap the bad guy of the day, which he has done on occasion. And Featherfall is just there to make sure he doesn't take fall damage as often. Second level spells will be Lesser Restoration, Pyrotechnics, and Web. While he has treated a couple of sicknesses before, sometimes it just helps to do it quick and easy so you don't have to stand around and eventually get caught. And of course, again, Web, got to entangle those bad guys. Pyrotechnus is more of a distraction. And with that being said, that is the end of this video. What did you enjoy most about this build and about Jared as a character? Let me know down in the comment section below which episode was your favorite. And if you enjoyed the two movies that tried to wrap up the series. I personally liked them, though the lore at the end of the second movie was a bit strange. Uh, let me know what you think down in the comment section below. But until next time, this has been Drehan. And I am offline.